Hey, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co, and today I'm unboxing Wave 1 of ISS Vanguard. Unboxing and rambling and coffee shot as usual to start everything off. This is going to be the usual, well, just jumping all over the place. This is ISS Vanguard. We have a whole bunch of fun things to go through. The section boxes, the game, the miniatures, the random little coin I have to make sure this box thing doesn't fall over forward because when I move this out... Oh, now it's working. Now it's working. I spent five minutes trying to get this box to stand up. The nature of the plastic creases underneath it with that, it, was, it wasn't working. And now it is. Really, it wasn't. Let's go ahead and dive into it. The first, as usual, let's smooth everything out of the way so we can go ahead and not have things fall over as we go through this. We'll be going through this in no particular order, as well, usual, but let me see if I can get rid of this. We got a dice tower, we got a letter. We should go through the letter first. We should move this out of the way over here and this out of the way over here and have that there. Everything's all, all over the place. We'll get to it all shortly. Anyways, ISS Vanguard. This is one of the, possibly the biggest campaign I covered I'm trying to think, of, think through what I may have covered that was larger than this back in the early days of, well, me covering stuff. But this was definitely a big one for me to cover. It was very, very fun to actually have Awaken Realms reach out to, to have me cover this game. It was very cool. And now, fast forward uh, two years later or whatever, however long it's been, and now I work for GameFound, which was not what I expected at the time I did this. But let's go ahead and dive into this, starting off, Dear Backer. It is always an incredible moment for our team to deliver a new board game to our players, seeing all the hours of prototyping, there are others first, the first can be organized since a public beta test, the first we'd like to mention, I'm jumping around over the place. Most of backers took part in communities, dun, 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 on ISS Vanguard, and this is the obviously the big GameFound campaign that launched GameFound in the first place. We have Marcin, uh, Kristoff, Awaken Home's team, all signing this off. Whole bunch of things, I'm not going to read through the entire thing. If you back this game, then you already got one of these. Awaken Realms has always been incredible at sending out like very personalized letters and extra stuff in their campaign and trying to include as much as possible in their campaigns when they go through things. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into the, well, the base box of this. Now, off the bat, I will say there are already unboxing you can watch. There's an unboxing from, well, from Awaken Realms themselves. Quacklope did a very entertaining unboxing, highly recommend that. Uh, we also have... Uh, I already saw that One Stop Co-op Shop already started doing a solo run-through of the game, so I don't know why I'm... Look, I, didn't, I didn't take the plastic off. I don't know why I'm putting that under the camera yet. But One Stop Co-op Shop already did a solo run-through. You can check that out. Lots and lots of content. And just for the record, I will not be rushing my content on this game. The reason being that I already got the content on this game. Well, let's, let's go through this. Let's go ahead and open this box. And this is a large box. I hope it fits in a calyx. I haven't checked yet. We can do a calyx test in a second once we get this box top off. This box top is nicely on. And here's what we have in here. A whole lot of stuff. We got a whole lot of stuff on the side of the box too, by the way. I don't know what you can see over there, but it looks like you have it on your side as well. But just lots of things as far as Different ways fit stuff fit, but let's do a let's do a quick calyx test over here. This this fits into my calyx cubby, not necessarily yours, and this is not officially calyx for the record. This is the IKEA brand of Better Home and Gardens 25 foot cube. Actually, this one's not 25, but Better Home and Gardens cube organizer. You can find it on Walmart. That's the brand that I currently use. But let's go ahead and start pulling this out over here. So we got our standees, which I am less likely to be going through just by the nature of the fact that I have the miniatures. We also have our punch board tokens, which is, you know, nice because we'll probably need those because I don't think we have miniatures for everything. They feel a little, here we go, punching through. Okay, let's go ahead and push this off to the side just because they're a dropless interesting. And as far as what I was saying about the content, first of all, warning with the rambling. I mentioned this is an unboxing and rambling. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Thank you. Please subscribe, like, send these videos to all your random friends, or why would you do that? I don't I don't do that. Subscribing I do, liking I sometimes do, sharing YouTube videos with friends. It's gotta be comedy focused for me to do that. It's never hobby focused. Anyways, past that, um, this unboxing and rambling. If you're new here, this is me just going a bit all over the place, talking a bit about the game. Yes, I will talk about ISS Vanguard. Yes, I have spent 10 to 15 hours in this world, but also other stuff too. Like randomly, just randomly, because why not? Now tomorrow I'll be going to see Jurassic World with my kids. Jurassic World, like the um, like a play, not the movie, like a play in like one of those big conventions and those giant dinosaurs running around, because why not? So, we'll look over here. Here we got the rule book. Now, this is, I believe, the first Awakened Realms rule book to have outside, like real outside help. Like Paul Grogan worked in this rule book, which means it's going to be interesting to go through because I have gone through a lot of Awakened Realms games and I have 
liked a lot of Wicked Realms games, and I have not liked a lot of Wicked Realms rulebooks. I have generally been very positive on the end results and very critical of the rulebooks that got you there. So this is going to be interesting to go through to see exactly how this one plays out. And even Isis Vanguard, which I've already played, which I guess means I'm still not the best judge of it because I, I am walking with knowledge of the experience. But even Isis Vanguard, which I played, I, I read and learned through it with a prototype rulebook. So, um... That wasn't the, the easiest experience either. But this has uh, Paul Grogan involved. And we have, you know, starting your first game, uh, page 10 over here. And that will take you through, jump right into play with tutorials and all this stuff. I mean, this is a longer rule book. Whoa, holy hell. I mean, maybe maybe the cost of having Paul Grogan involved is that you have a longer rule book, which may well be more clear, may well have more examples. It looks to be fairly text heavy. And I remember ISS Vanguard is one of those interesting experiences that at least for myself, my own recollection of it is that if I were playing ISS Vanguard with you, I can get you up and running in a few minutes. I'll give you a few basics as far as, I mean, there are two different phases to the game. There's a ship phase and a planetary phase. And so the planetary phase, I think the planetary phase, I could basically say, hey, here's the basics, now get up and running, and then guide you through the rest on my own. And the, the ship phase, I think, might have a bit more explanation as you go through each area. Overall, I find that ISS Vanguard is a game that is not complicated, and I can hold your hand through it as a cooperative experience, but there is a lot to know, specifically because there's two phases, and one of those phases needs rules for, like, every new section of it. But... Either way, that's a long rule book. Fortunately, I know the rules, so, um, yeah. But I was saying, as far as content, uh, I right now have other games I'm trying to go through. Even even on the Reckon Realm side, I'm currently, they currently have an active campaign for Tainted Grail, uh, Kings of Moon, and I need to play through Tainted Grail. That's on my agenda. I want to play through Tainted Grail and get up and running there. So I have a lot of things that are higher priority for me at the moment, and I've already played through Isis Vanguard, so I'm just in less of a rush over overall. Not in no rush. I like the game, but I want to play other stuff at the moment, and I've played through a decent amount of Isis Vanguard, I'm just not not as much in a rush. Now, these are going to be the various um, pages that go into your ship book. That's why you can see the little fold out. You have the bridge, the star map. These will all be added one at a time. I should probably put these back into. Wow. This is bringing back memories. This is bringing back memories. The last time I played this, this is still in a prototype phase, and there's a lot going on here. There's a lot we have. Oh my gosh, we have the Memorial Wall. That's where that's where Quackalo killed a whole bunch of people because he tends to do that. But either way, let's go ahead and put this in. And I do highly recommend, by the way, I highly recommend the Quackalo unboxing. Very charming. I am biased, of course, but I thought it was very well done. Let's go ahead and put this down over here. If I can get this back in here, because I do want this back in here until I properly go through this experience. Let's put those in. Put these in. Move everything off to the side. I'm probably going to need the side of the box to put everything back. What is this? Ooh, ooh, I know what that is. That is our actual binder. That is our actual binder. We have some few things. Oh my gosh, we have some things going on here. We have some We have some stuff. Let's go through things one at a time. So, this overall is our binder. Now, it does seem like it doesn't have a lot going on in here. I'm assuming they'll have me construct it as part of the loading process, as part of the learning process, not loading process. But this is the ship book over here, which everything will be going into slowly. Uh, we'll go ahead and have the planet Planetopia over here, which is the Planetopia will be going through as far as giving you into the eye of the void. Like, I've done these. I've done these things. I think I've done these things, because I've done whatever they gave me, but this looks vaguely familiar. Some of these things look familiar. Maybe not. Pellucid, I think we covered Pellucid. Matchstick, I don't believe we covered. Brimstone, I don't... I don't remember if we covered Brimstone. Everstorm. Everstorm we definitely covered. Yeah, this is like this is where some of these aspects, Everstorm Stage 2, oh my gosh, this is bringing back memories. This is bringing back... So basically, when you play through Isis Vanguard, when you play through this game, you're going to be wandering around from location to location, and you're going to be going on these bits of these journeys where you move from spot to spot, paying the cost along the way. The whole iconography and general layout has been definitely stepped up a bit. There is, I believe, an app, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's definitely an app over here. But you're going to be going through different encounters and rolling dice and spending dice. And general feedback initially, like I believe Board Game Ramblings just put out a review, speaking of more coverage you can check out. Board Game Ramblings just put out a review which is very positive, which is always great because I, I really like the experience with caveats. The caveats is that this is a story-based game and I tend to be more mechanically based person and this was more story heavy mechanically like. I enjoyed Ice Vanguard. I'm happy to dive into it and I'm happy to see that others enjoyed it as well. We got more stuff. This is like... I'm, I'm wary of how I go through this because I don't want to mess things up. We have our dice over here, or some of the dice. I believe I have a bag full of dice over here. But 
they had a lot of dice situation. We got these like very cool, like we being people who got the prototype, got these very cool like metal dice and whatnot that were very, not metal, like these glass dice almost that were very, very fun, but also broke a lot. And there were whole, there's a whole challenge of how to make dice that were cool while also not being dice that would break. These were fun. I remember these. You have these over here, these icons over here, illustrating the most common types and sides for different things. Yeah, this is this is bringing back memories. But we have a whole bunch of stuff in this initial folder over here. Uh, I assume giving us things that we need for starting off populating our shipbook. This is called our secret em Probably should pay a drop more attention. This is the secret envelope, which you should not open until instructed, and you certainly didn't see anything here. Do I blur through that? I showed you dice. Is that secret? I don't know. We have our system maps. Our system maps. These are going to be the various maps. And again, I like the way they've done this. They had like a whole... One of the things they had in the prototype that I did not love, they had a bunch of stuff that was just hard to work with. And one of those things was pulling out all these map pages that in theory was great, but was in, pa in practice was a bit of a pain. But this gives you like what you're going to be doing at one point when you're in the ship book. You'll be on the bridge and you'll be navigating to spot to spot, spending your energy to try various actions and interactions, to checking out planets and asteroids and various ships floating through space. So you can have all these different options and planets and star maps. This is effectively your star map. Again, to me, ISS Vanguard pl felt like playing through Mass Effect. That's effectively what it was. Effectively, effectively Mass. We have this over here. This is gonna be our prologue book, our comic book giving you the initial story. At a glance, it looks like this is basically the same initial story we had, but this is the, the comic book giving you a bit of a, a backdrop to what the rural devices Vanguard is. We have our operations book. How much stuff is there? Jeez. Our operations book, our log book. We have so many things here. I'm sorry. This this game is chock full of, of stuff. We have our operations book. Uh, you will mark and need to fill through this book. This is going to give you the logs you're going to be going through, making choices. And again, I believe you can do all of this from the app. Does it say so? If you instead, you may use the official ISS Vanguard app. We have our log book, which again, more of stuff over here. Just a log book, just tons and tons and tons. This is just intensely insane. We had significantly less than this over here. Just interactions and story. Again, all this can be done through the app as well, in case you prefer that. We have our lander, our lander. This is gonna be the dragonfly starting off. We have a few different options over here as far as our landers. We have the dragonfly, which I believe the starting default lander. Some things have changed over here. Like I don't know these symbols at all. I don't recognize those. We have our supplies track, which makes sense. We have the things we'll be adding over here. Uh, landing, I, I don't, it's been a while. It's been a while. We have different options as far as you know, the Pelican and the Space Ranger and the Void Ranger and the Fosslug and the the Waygate. All these different options for different landers you'll be unlocking as the game goes on. And you'll always have your Dragonfly as your default that you can return to, if I recall correctly. We also have our binders full of, you know, these are the various card packs we'll be putting things that will go into your binder as you're creating up your binder. And then we have this over here. This is the, the stuff we have, just various card components, the various trays, looks like the section trays, although we have different section trays, and then our sun drop miniatures. Let's go ahead and go through all of that. Lots of stuff to go through. So, first of all, we have these over here. These are going to be your, your section areas. Now, you don't have to go onto the planet with a section, but these are dual layered to track your dice, your, your, your profile card. No, your profile card is probably going to be over here. And this is going to be your pool of dice, your charging managing. Again, these are just going to have your injury, your discard pile. This is just a fancier version of what we had in the prototype, and fancier is definitely nicer because, well, quality of life upgrades and all of that. We have our miniatures, which are obviously the most desired part of everything. Let's go ahead and pull these out over here. Nicely sun dropped as far as things go. These are these are very solid, very solid over here. The orange is very orange, as you might expect. Let's start with the ISS Vanguard itself, which this is something I never had the opportunity to have back in the day. So this over here is the ISS Vanguard. This this, this little guy here. I'll try to get different angles on that. Looks very cool. Looks very fun. Overall, never had this. We have that crystal aspect over here, the, the sun drop type to it, or, you know, quality. But this is cool. This is, I assume this is IS Vanguard. I'm just kind of assuming, honestly, but it does seem very cool. And then we have our different section people. We have a, I believe, if I recall correctly, we have a male and female model for each section. And then you have a million different crew, but you can try to figure out which ones to combine or mix and match or to figure that out. But over here, let's see if we can get these to focus. That's going to be one section over here. This is going to be maybe the security section. No, this is the uh, the recon section. For the security section, if I can put these back properly, the security section is more blue, so this will be the security over here. These will be the security. And these are basically the same models we had back in the day, just these are final production instead of what we had back in the day. 
I'm also going to have, let's see, I don't know what all these are. We have the next one is engineering. We have engineering and then science. Let's go through the engineering over here. Engineering is these two, very orangey, show up nicely on that screen over there. And then we additionally have science as our final option. Science over here. And this could be, oh, we do have a little, we do have a little thingy for it. Let's, I'll show you in a second. But we have science over here. There we go. These are the science models. Now we do have a full box full of additional models. We'll get into that shortly. But that's what we have for this. And then the little thing I said we do have is this. This is actually here. And this will, in some way, there we go, found it. I found that little guy. Now we can actually have this over here. So we can go ahead and show you this on the top camera as well. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's very cool. Very cool overall. I mean, you're not doing a ton with this. This is not really going much as far as as far as far places you have to deal with this. It's kind of a table piece. I don't remember there being a non-table piece reason. Putting this back is going to be such a pain, by the way. Such a pain. Then we have cards. Now, this is the part. This is the part where we just have a lot of cards to go through. I don't know how we're going to handle this, but let's start with the fact that we have section boxes. So, these are your section boxes for the game. Each color coded. Uh, these are nicer than what we got for the prototype. They seem nicer at least. They seem more or less work to navigate, although we also have these section boxes over here. But these will store your cards, your dice, and all that for the various sections. And we have some cards already in there. And I don't know how to best handle all this stuff here because there's a lot of things to go through here. And they're mostly card based at this point, which means we'll show you all the, the extras as well. But I don't know if I care about going through a million cards for you. And also the mindfulness of the fact that there would be spoilers in this. So we have, let's see what we have. We have our Pelicans, our Space Ranger. These are just the various, you know, cards we have for that. We have our reference card for the game round. These were actually pretty good even in the prototype, if I recall. So hopefully they've been better now. We have our Danger Dice card, our Deadly Space Mode. And then we have, what are these? I don't, I don't know if I want to, I don't, I don't want to go through things that may have I don't want to spoil things for you, so I'm not going to do that. But these seem like different interaction cards that will introduce different options in them. Like, I recognize the general symbology for how you go through an action chain, but I don't know what those are. We have our bases for landers, I guess, and our various bases for the miniatures as well. We have a little box over there. We have more dice. We have all these fun danger dice. And by fun danger dice, I mean these are all the bad dice. We have chocks. Just tons of these as far as just dice. Just amazing piles of dice. Although I do want to go through, you know, this is a good time to go ahead and see the uh, special dice. Because I think they're in here. Let's go through what we have as far as special dice and do a quick comparison and contrast between the different types of dice in the game because we do have different types of dice in the game. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, okay. Yeah, these are better. These are better. A little less visible. So for those who prioritize functionality above all else, understand that these are a drop less visually obvious compared to these. Let's do a compare and contrast and show you how everything looks over here. But it depends what you prioritize. And honestly, they're both nice. It's just a question of what you prefer. And also, were you willing to pay extra for these as well? Because they do cost extra. But these are the dice you have. You have the sparkly kind of marbleized dice material versus the plain ones and you can see at a glance these are obviously a drop more obvious to just see things but these are a drop cool looking let's look at the top cam over there like just looking at these over here you can see the difference between the approach and the type as well by the way this is a good time to mention for the record that uh this is available to to late pledge like they've opened i think it's available to late pledge i'm pretty sure i believe they reopened the pledge manager is what i should say they reopened the pledge manager uh, i'll show you some other colors too they reopened the pledge manager in the game uh, for the game between wave one and wave two so you now have options to go ahead and back ice of vanguard more in case you watched the board game ramblings video in case me showing you marbleized dice makes you want these over here instead although also if you already have the game understand you'll have played through it with these a lot so do you really care that's a you question not a me question but you can see over here again these are clearer just plain red and then we have over here these are just you know nicer looking as far as i don't know it's a toss-up i would say you you make sure you want them if you're on the fence i tend to like marbleized dice ever since playing cthulhu death may die i have been a huge fan of marbleized dice and i generally like the experience they give but also you're paying a premium for them does they do they hold their value over time sometimes yes sometimes no things like marbleized dice have always been in those mid-range categories where you sometimes get your money back sometimes not it's definitely a decision you have to make because these definitely do cost extra although i'm seeing this pack of extra dice that i'm guessing are the secret ones i was not supposed to open so that's that's a spoiler in itself for the upgraded dice bag 
I'm gonna have to figure out storage for this stuff later. That's gonna be future Alex's problem. Today's Alex is already worried about just getting everything back into the box as it is, so we're not gonna heavily focus on those problems. Anyways, let's put these all back over here. Let's put these dice back in the box. Uh, these are gonna be the section dice you're gonna be gathering for your characters. You're gonna be upgrading and leveling up the dice as they go. Uh, the whole system was a lot of fun. Again, not gonna be going through every card, and we have just too many cards here to go through. Let me just give you an idea of what you're looking at over here. This is what I have as far as cards right now. We have cards over here, we have cards over here, and we have cards over here. I've already gone through the cards over here, and I'm a little bit nervous about just how much stuff there is to go through. So let's just start that process. Okay, let's go through a few cards over here. These are the section cards. The section cards we got over here. Let's see. Do I want to? I, I always, I always prefer using a knife as opposed to those card tabs because I find I often end up using my fingernail to to pull those open, which is never quite as much fun. So let's see. Isis Vanguard. How are we doing in Isis Vanguard? Well, I've started playing through Change of Grail. Like I said, I'm 15 hours into Isis Vanguard uh, ish. I don't know exactly. It's been a long time. I've played through around 15 hours of Either Fields, and I prefer Isis Vanguard. I think. Either Fields did a lot of things that was pretty interesting that I really did enjoy, but I think I prefer the overall larger narrative pace of ISS Vanguard. I thought both Either Fields and ISS Vanguard were more story driven and a little lighter mechanics, but Either Fields, each story felt a little more isolated and I didn't really get a good sense of the grander overarching narrative. As opposed to ISS Vanguard, I do. And so I prefer ISS Vanguard from that stance alone. But Either Fields was fun. Tainted Grail, I'm intrigued by. I'm not sure which one I'll prefer. I need more time in the Tainted Grail universe. As of right now, I still prefer Isis Vanguard. With the caveat that I need to give Tainted Grail more time, energy, and attention before I get, make a hard determination. And I plan on giving it more time, energy, and attention very shortly. So, these are our section cards over here. Some of these are going to be cards you have to upgrade as you go through the game. I have to find where the upgrade marks are. But basically, you're going to have these section cards. They definitely improved the iconography and made this crisper and cleaner. But overall, you're going to have these cards, a little bit of a deck building puzzle as you draw cards from your deck to give you additional options and tools as you go through this experience. These are going to be a lifeline, giving you some degree of mitigation, some degree of just actions or abilities, different things you can do. Each section having their own different feel and flavor to them. It looks like these section cards are really divided between the sections here and they just didn't divide them up. There's going to be a lot of work for me here. Over here, we have my favorite set of cards, just because I can recognize the shape of them, which are going to be... Nope. Nope, I lied. I said I recognize the shape of them, but I totally don't. These are these are so many things here. There's so many stuff. Okay, Isis Vanguard has a lot of explore, exploring going on, and a lot of different cards in ways. There's going to be points of interest cards that will overlay the various locations, uh, just giving you, well, a degree of, like, kind of... It, exploring downwards as you go through the experience you're kind of exploring downwards going through these different options and putting new cards on the table giving you different options so we have just tons of points of interest cards because we have a giant campaign you're also going to have exploration cards that will give you different ways of scanning the sector you're in for more information we have the crew cards which we'll go through over here the crew cards and then i i thought i had the equipment cards but i want those equipment cards uh the uh extra equipment you can bring to you to the planet but over here we have you know, we have Andrew McKay and Millie Peters and Natalia Torres and Gong Shun and Sophia Ben. We have all these different characters in the game. They're just like, just tons and tons of characters. And they all have their own backstories as well. Something we haven't heavily talked about is we have their backstories in the, in the game that you're going to be going through as well. So many people. So many, so many people over here. Each with their own different abilities. These are different uh, crew members that you'll be unlocking. And if I recall correctly, or if the experience hasn't changed, that if I recall correctly, the you're going to be unlocking them almost randomly, choosing a few, and then choosing which ones to add to your section as you slowly level up each section and go through that. So many people in this game. So many characters. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Either way, uh, that's going to be some of the characters we have over there. Uh, there may be another pack of characters. I don't even know. Nope. These are this side up. Tutorial deck. We have a tutorial deck that will guide you through the experience. That should be helpful. The original tutorial was definitely helpful. We have our section cards, which will help divide sections of our, of our book. Again, I'm just trying to go through some degree of things over here while not going through everything. Over here, here we have our equipment. These are the things I liked over here. I like this equipment a lot. I'm just going to see if I can pull that without scratching the card. Yep, I can. Basically, if I can pull it the first time without scratching the card, then I'm good to go. Once I have to start scraping at it, I just grab a knife at that point, if I can, if a knife is available. Other times I sit there and say, no, I can do this, and then I learn quickly I could not have done it. Okay, this one's already falling off, which is good. That will give us access there. 
So these are the equipment. Equipment's always a fun part. You have some basic stuff like med kits, which will just help you gather more supplies or heal yourself. No, med kits are not supplies. I apologize. Med kits are basically just med kits. Supplies are supplies. But then you have additional oh, construction arm. That was fun. You have all these different things you have as far as different options. The zip line was fun. The live stream week, I don't believe I have that. Other crew members may assist you from other sectors. Ooh, that's helpful. There's so many different abilities over here. Mobility suit, stasis suit. We have lots of options. Where's my... I'm looking for a specific thing over here. Not the energy shield. Not that. Not that. Nope. Nope. There was one particular item that I have fond memories of. Not this. Not this. I vaguely recall. I'm trying to find if it's still here. I don't know. Comms tower, expansion, drill week, pod launcher. It may, the problem is it might have different art, and I'm kind of looking for the original art. So it may have already... It may already exist, but I just may not have seen it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah, they definitely have these fun equipment that we're able to utilize in different ways. That These are very important as far as how you level up and gather stuff to bring down to the planet. Let's see what else we got. We got some sleeves in here, which is interesting because we got a full other box full of sleeves. That's going to be interesting to go through that. What do we have over here? We have... Ooh, these are various cards for your for your ship because you're going to be going through a lot of cards as you go through the ship experiences. Yep, we have a home six. We have different situations you'll be encountering. We have mission cards, which are an important part of the structure. Then you have your rank up cards. These are going to be the things you need to do to actually rank up in the game. And that's primarily what we have over here. There's some other stuff going on. We have our scanning sector card over here. We have our planet, uh, you know, analyzers. But that's basically what we got as far as the core box of ISS Vanguard. Now is the point where I try to put everything away and hope that I did so in enough of a procedural order that everything sort of makes sense. Let's find out. Let's go ahead and put this to top camera and let's see you watch me put it away in case you need that information for yourself. Although the, the interesting part is you'll also be going through this a bit differently because of the fact that some stuff will be going into binders once you start going through the experience differently. But well, let's see. Let's see what we can do for right now. Putting this all in here and hoping for the best and planning for the worst. We got this over here. This feels like it's got extra stuff. Oh my gosh, those dice are gonna be a problem. Okay, we got this in here, ish, ish. I'm not feeling confident right now because I don't love how this is. I don't love this one bit. It does not feel like it's supposed to go in here. I don't. I don't like this right now. You have to kind of put this in here. Let's see if we can put this in here. That might give us a bit more leeway as far as all this stuff fitting but not really because you can go here like that that works ish we'll put this down in here this down in here and if we do it like that we have just a tad of a pop-up nothing crazy it will all work beautifully once we are actually um you know doing all our stuff properly as opposed to just trying to put it all back in the box right now also yes i'm fully aware that the side of the box shows me exactly how to do it but that would just take way too long Okay, this is definitely not totally going to be crushed and everything like that. Let's go through that. Let's see what we got. Let's do section boxes. We got a dice tower, but I wanted the section boxes. Although I don't know if these even fit properly back in the base game box. It's one of the problems with upgrades and stuff. My ideal goal would be to make everything Isis Vanguard fit into the two boxes, the miniature box and that. I hope so, because otherwise we have a bunch of peripheral extras that are just annoying. But we'll see. I mean, I believe uh, Tainted Grail? No. Either fields have the same concept as these section boxes. Ooh, these are painted. Sundrop, sundrop, not painted. These are pretty. Okay. Are they functional? No idea. That's another question. In general, when you get upgrades, it's always the question of functional or... Like, there's a, there's a company out there called Fancy or Functional, I believe. And they do different... Ooh. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a magnetic little clasp right there. So, over here, you got our section boxes. And if we just take those off and just put them, ooh, they just clip on like that. Again, very sexy. No idea if it's functional. But we have our different colors over here. Different colors for the different crews. All nicely sun-dropped. Very, very cool. But they have no degree of organization. The section boxes they have in the plastic tray uh, give you more degree of organization. Why am I focusing on that so heavily? Because if you didn't get these, and these are cool, understand that there is a downside to these, which these are very, very cool and not as functional. They're fancy, but less functional, unfortunately. So, are they bad? No idea. Will they do the job? Yes. Will I probably use these? Probably. Does it feel like a, they could have used a divider down the middle to at least feel like at least the same as the other ones? Yeah, that would have been nice. But either way, those are your section boxes over there. I'll figure out what to do with those later as far as using them. I don't know if they'll fit in the box. That My bigger issue is fitting them in the box. Like if they don't fit in the box, that's just a pain. Anyways, we got that, we got that. Let's go through these over here. So, we have our crew maps. Color me confused. I'm just confused now. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is interesting. Oh, no, 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 it's there, it's there. 
Okay, so if you look at this from this side over here, from this angle, it looks like there's only three colors. And I was like, there's four crew mats. I don't, there, there's, there's four sections. Why do we only have three crew mats? But we don't have three crew mats. We have all four. When I turned it to the other side, I saw the purple. But it, it just was very confusing for a second. Let's just pull out one of these. Not all. This is just basically the different section mats that you have. These are the play mats you have for the game. I believe this is right side up. I'm not confident of that. I'm not confident. This feels like it's right side up. But yeah, you can have these crew mats. These are for each sections. You can go ahead and have your boards in the middle that you'll put down over here. The various extra cards you're managing. The injuries, the discards, all your dice pools, all those things. Uh, lots of table space increase to this. If you use something like this, understand you are adding to the table space. No question whatsoever. Uh, but also very pretty. Now this goes into the category of play mats, which I... Will they fit in the box? I don't even know. If these fit in the box, I feel better about them. Again, you can see my general standard is I hope things fit in the box. That's just all I want from anything. Okay, let me just put this back in here even. Tomorrow is the box problem. Today is just getting this even just back in here just to be able to store properly. Let's see. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll deal with this later. But will it fit? They are the same size as the box. So in theory, these should go into the box. In theory, once you punch things and get things organized, that should work. We have our dice tower. Do I dare try to assemble it now? That seems like a bad idea. Let's try to assemble it now. This is probably a terrible idea. I don't know why I'm doing this. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty looking. Ooh, ooh, look at that. That is a pretty looking dice tower. How does it work? How does it assemble? No idea, but I bet we can figure it out. They have a nice assembly guide over here. We are going to take a brief intermission to assemble the dice tower. So, let's punch these out over here. This goes through like that. This is very cool. I just want to see what the result is over here. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, in general, this video is timestamped. So feel free to jump to the next section right about now. If you are able to, if you're on a device that lets you do so. This is going to come out over here. Let's go ahead and put this off the side. This over here. We've got these pieces. Just getting this. Let's just go through the assembly process. Because it looks like it could be quick enough that it's worth it. I mean, I've done worse. I remember assembling the um, Dead Reckoning's ghost ship or whatnot i remember something like that on camera that was a pain but let's go through this like this and this and this and this and so we got the following if we look over here we have this piece over here and i assume i don't even know what i'm doing at all okay we have this piece over here the problem is i don't even know which side is supposed to be in and out okay this side is supposed to be like this we should have another one of these pieces over here somewhere there we go here we go so this goes here and this goes here which piece is the first one it looks like this is the first one that feels so wrong does it go like this it must go like this okay so we probably put it like this the problem is i can't tell the colored side of things but we're going to do the best we can and hope that we're right so this is going to go like this in here um then that's a then we're going to have b is going to be like this over here does this need glue because Place removes, it's magnitude to use a blade, cutting. It doesn't say to use glue, so we're going to try to not use glue until they tell us to use glue. So we now have this like this and this like this. And we're going to put it off to the side because that's not needed anymore. Then we're going to go to here where we have this is like this and this is like this. So I assume, I assume like that. We're going to grab this piece over here, which goes up there. This piece like there and this piece goes down here. So we have the bottom piece over here. We have these two look similar-ish. I'm going to go like that and then like that okay okay we got this ish i think we're hoping for the best nope nope it needs to be like this and like that so we do this mm, i think so like i think like this okay so we're doing this the problem is they don't have exact options there we're going to put this on the back which i feel should be the color these don't fit in perfectly which makes it a bit hard to navigate and i'm going to go there we're going to have to try to deal with all this in a second. So this is going to have to go trying to line up this. This is where the hard part comes in because of the nature of what we're doing here. No, no, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. Okay, let's try this like this. So we got this, we got this, we got this. All like that. And this has to kind of loosely go in there. Okay, hopefully it's all making sense. Nope, nope, nope. Don't, don't fall apart on me now don't get me now okay we got nope we have to do it one piece at a time here we go there we go there we go okay we got this we still slowly getting progress over here 
This one has to go in like this and like that, okay? And this one has to go in like this. Hmm. I feel it's like this. And I know. Okay. Bear with me, bear with me. We got, we got this mostly ish, adjacent ish. Except for that part that just completely fell apart on us. This is harder than I thought it would be to do on camera because the hard part is getting these to all fit in nicely while this kind of tries to. There we go. Okay, okay. There we go. I think it might be good enough. It might not be. We'll find out the hard way later. Okay. In the meantime, I feel like it's. I feel like I'm doing this wrong a bit. I don't know. If I toss, where are my dice at? Where are my dice at? If I toss it down right now, they might get stuck. I feel like this has to be the other way. I feel like it's not so... This is the problem. Let's go ahead and continue this right now. So we have this over here. This is going to go in the front-ish, like so. But it has to, in some way, actually be covered, right? It has to, in some way, be blocked. So this should actually go in the front like this. If we're going back to the top camera. And then that should be able to slide all down nicely. But the question is, will it? So let's go ahead and grab some dice for a second from this pool. We're going to grab our special dice and see if this kind of works right now. Because we got to go ahead and dump these down. You see? Oh, well, that's too clear. That is... Okay. So that one definitely has to be different. This last one on the bottom has to be the other way, I imagine, just because of just the angles. Oh, no. I'm going to have to completely redo it now. Completely redo it. Okay. Okay, just gonna. This is a mistake, by the way, for the record. This is definitely a mistake to do this on camera because of the way. No, no, don't, don't mess up on me. Okay, we got you still kind of holding your own. You can come down over here. You can go in there. That makes sense more. Okay, great. Now you. Can go like this over here and then you can go like this over here and now I think I kind of mostly got it about to push in there there we go okay now we can dump these dice down again a second time this goes on the front like so I feel like it needs glue Feel like it definitely needs glue this is the problem part like it does not feel like it's stuck sticking on just fine without glue and this will go like nope nope this is totally 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 not as smooth as i'd like this goes this just needs glue that's the only problem i i thought of something that's without glue is the right way to go and i was wrong definitely so 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 wrong because this is how it goes i think at the end of the day this is how we have our dice tower and now we go ahead and toss this down where it's going to probably knock off the front part like that. This needs glue. This dice tower definitely needs glue. Yeah. We'll do this later without the knocking your down part in the future. At least we know what we're doing. At least now it functionally works. Ish. We'll glue it later. This is a horrible mistake. Let's see if we can get this at least so it looks nice for right now. Back on front. That's just falling apart. We got glue. We assemble inserts all the time. Okay. So, that is your ISSS Vanguard insert. Let's go ahead and put that down over there. And hope it doesn't fall apart more than it already has. Anyways, with that lovely intermission out of the way. That was way too long. Way too long. Let's go ahead and continue with the section pets. We haven't even got to the fun part yet. The fun part is going to be the giant box full of section pets. Well, not, not the giant box full of section pets. But the fun part is going to be the giant box full of... The miniatures. The miniatures. Now, ISS Vanguard or Awaken Realms did a good job of keeping the personnel files and the section pets involved in your Wave 1 shipping, meaning you can enjoy those things off the bat without having to wait to shape Wave 2. Like, one of the things I don't love is when a game is like, hey, by the way, you can enjoy all these things in Wave 2, and I'm like, but then I want to play Wave 1 if I don't get to have these absolutely adorable section pets over here. I mean, look at this thing. Look at this thing over here. That's one of these section pets you have access to. And we have this little giant monkey. This little giant monkey. I don't know why I said that. But look at this guy. Now, they're going to hold your dice. One of the things you can see over here, there's actually a dice place. They can hold your dice in the game over there. We have these little other animals, again, with their little dice holder on top. That's fun. 
And then lastly, the llama, because the llama is obviously the most important. And again, with its dice holder on its back, but that's the, the llama over there. And again, all sun dropped, but these are very cool as far as these go. Again, hope I can fit everything into the base boxes. That's going to be my biggest thing I'm going to be trying to do because I don't love having a million little boxes. Although these are garbage. I can toss these. These are... I smacked myself in the face with that. We have our core personnel files. These give you a bit of a backstory to the various characters you'll be diving into. Um, these are probably just cards, so I'm not going to heavily go into this. But we do have a rule book. So we got our cards. We have our rule book. There's more files and different things. This actually reminds me, this is actually similar to Roleplayer Adventures. If you played Roleplayer Adventures, they have um, the Nefrat's, oh my gosh, Nefrat's Judgment as an optional way to play through Roleplay Adventures. And that case gives you more ways to go through the game, but giving you a backstory to all the characters. And I think with that, we can finally go to the miniature heavy part of this unboxing, which took us way too long to get to, but that just is what it is. Let's go ahead and see what we have. This is the Close Encounters box, which gives you all the extra stuff that you might want for your Roleplay Adventures experience. Let's see what we got over here. We have this. Ooh, I remember this guy. I remember that guy. We have a beautiful thing. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Now this is very, very pretty. Just that sheer amount of little blue over there it gives you a very nice tint to everything going on. We have multiple stuff. What do we have? We have probably two layers over here. Yep, we got two layers. And then we have, this is probably one layer. Yep, that's definitely one layer. So many fun things to go through. You're going to have all your landers in different ways. So we're going to have all these. And these are just tons of things we're going to go through. I'm not going to go through everything here. But these have a nice bluish tint on them. Really enjoy that. I don't know what all these things are. Like, what is this? Is this going to be a monument that goes on the board in some way? No idea, but it's very nice and shiny. I'll tell you that much. We have this. I particularly like this lander over here. And they all have their own little pegs in them as well. So we have a little peg we can put on to some of these things or all these things. I don't really know the details. This will have to find out which peg goes on this. But yeah, that's going to be this, this lander over here. We have this guy over here, which again, don't know exactly what this is, but it looks cool as far as things go. What is it? It, look, like, it looks like it holds something almost. Maybe it holds a die. The way that's angled, it looks like it can hold a four-sided die. Or maybe it's holding... Oh, 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 oh. Maybe it's holding this over here. That looks like it could be a thing. I don't want to push too hard in case I'm wrong, but that looks like it could be an option as far as the way those clip together. And it looks like there's different alternative options too. So you might have an option for different ways that those things clip together to give you different kinds of experiences. We have our little kind of mini dojo situation here. Not entirely sure what this is, but some sort of space satellite situation. Again, these are different things you, they might even just correspond to basic equipment you have. But then you also have various baddies you're gonna be fighting and encountering with in the universe. So over here, we start to see some of the um, different options you'll have. And they're gonna be things for wave two as well, I assume. I don't know exactly how they're splitting up wave one and wave two. We have those weird energy shields on these guys. This is like one of those things you have over there. Then we have the big bad. This is something we had in the original prototype where this guy over here was in the original prototype walking around the planet, stomping on people, just messing with them in different ways. Very cool overall. The sun drop is nice. Those extra plastic tokens are nice. This is something that we've started to see come on do as well in terms of putting, incorporating different materials into the miniatures for different effects as you go through the game. You have this over here. Again, just tons of little stuff. And then that's before we get to the other section over here, which I'll have to try to figure out how to keep everything organized. But we have a whole different lower level just full of other miniature monsters you'll have to encounter. I can pull this up. Ooh. We have different things over here. We have the blue one, which my favorite are the blue just because they're prettier looking. We have this blue guy who looks like he holds a die. What is he? I don't know exactly, but it looks like he holds a die on his back, which makes him another one of those kind of like the uh, robots you have over there, the, the little section pets. And we have a ton of little other assorted, just different options. This little tornado thing you have to deal with in some way. We have... I don't even know what we have. We have this, these little, like, this little thing that looks like it's kind of a part of the planet surrounded by energy, pulling it up. A little, um, what's the word? Almost an obelisk or a totem of some sort. We have these over here. We have this creepy alien woman who's in some way going to hurt us and cause pain to us. You can just tell. Yeah, lots of different miniatures over here. Let's go ahead and show you a high, a top shot of the general box. This is what we have as far as your miniature section. So that's that's going to be what you got over there. Those are going to be the various miniatures. Those are going to be your little over-the-top ones. And then, if we put this down over here, back on top, 
these are going to be your section ships with your nice little blue tint of the different things you can encounter there. And that's what we have for Isis Vanguard. Although I probably should put this back on underneath because that actually belongs underneath. I don't want to mess things up. Nope, other way around. Probably other way around. That looks like better. That looks better. Okay. Hopefully we don't break any miniatures in the process. This goes on top like so. This goes on top like so. This has our nice little handy dandy sheet showing you where everything goes in case you ever mess that up. And then this goes back down here. And then lastly, 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 we have one more thing to go over. And then we're done. Then we're all done with this way too long unboxing, which is the posters. Oh, posters. I'm not going to keep posters. I like posters in theory, but I don't actually do anything with them. So this is not going to be that exciting. They might look pretty. I'm sure they'll look pretty. And they might just go in the garbage after. I feel bad. I always feel bad. Like, uh, you know, also this unsettled, this unsettled above my head over there, the other Grand Space Opera. They gave me beautiful artwork. And I'm like, thanks so much for the beautiful artwork. What am I supposed to do with this? RSS Vanguard over here. So we have these posters. I can't even show you them because I have to like unwind them in different ways. Yeah, I'm not going to try to do this. This is going to be too much work to try to. I'll figure this out later. We'll figure this out. This is already, already feels like a mistake. No. There we go. There we go. Got it back up into a somewhat manageable state. We'll put that to the side. And that is basically it. That is your ISS Vanguard unboxing. Thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate having all of you here. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll throw a link to the pledge manager down below. Uh, again, reminder, I work for GameFound. Take that into account. I would always do this, but I guess just reminder while we're at it. I don't get a commission, though. I just work for GameFound. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one.
I mean, I, I could go through the entire pack, but even, even I'm not that committed to the bit.